At Henry Schein, customers rely on us for healthcare solutions to help manage and grow their practices. Globally, we have more than 300 solutions to help nearly 1 million Henry Schein customers operate successful practices so they can focus on delivering quality care. With a business track record of over 30 years, Henry Schein Dental Warehouse is a leading South African-based distributor of high-quality dental consumables and equipment and services to dental professionals in private practice and state health facilities. In 2013, Henry Schein, a top NASDAQ-listed U.S.-based multinational healthcare products provider, bought an interest in the family-owned business. Now, as a proud Henry Schein company, we can provide a comprehensive range of Henry Schein private label dental consumables. After all quality criteria are met, we create the packaging and add our Henry Schein seal of excellence to the product. This seal indicates that we are so convinced you will appreciate the product that we will grant you an unconditional right of return. All consumable products are complimentary samples as you can return them for a 100% credit note if you are unhappy with the specifications. No questions asked. At Henry Shine, we partner with key exclusive suppliers to bring you the very best products. To further improve our service to you, approximately two years ago, we started offering equipment solutions such as imaging, treatment centers, and digital tech. Good afternoon, everybody. Um, we're just experiencing some technical difficulties with the stream, but we will get you connected as soon as possible in the next two minutes or so. Sure. Okay, we are doing the welcoming notes for now. I'll just show you. and how we carry ourselves as professionals. And we also had to bring on new ways of learning, um, mainly online webinars and workshops, and those could be very challenging at most times. So as the EFSCO, we had decided that we would have a hybrid conference to both have a physical attendance where people can have one-to-one -one sessions and experience of a workshops, and also, me believe I'm the one who tends to put my phone. Sorry, guys. Um, and also to to allow the virtual delegates to join us and be part of this momentous occasion. Now, through that, and and through the conference, you will see in the program we've had a very extensive program where we deal with clinicals, we deal with business entrepreneurship, and we deal with ethics. Now. That's also to, to assist you as the delegates to take your practice to the next level. Because when you succeed, the DPA succeeds. And that's all we want, you know, that's what we want from you. We want to see you to succeed. So with that said, I'm gonna call Dr. Tadi to please present Dr. Sibui, um, our first speaker, and to welcome you all to, to the conference. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Chen. Um, I think we know Dr. Sibui. He does not need any introduction. We call him Professor in Chitendo. He is one of the leading brains of Black Excellence when you look at Endo. Um, he's from Hazyview. He's getting a lot of qualifications among them. He obtained his first degree in Bachelor of Dental Therapy. And uh, he went on to do BDS. And he's also having MBA. And he, I think uh, last year, the year before last, he obtained his postgraduate diploma in endodontics. He's currently a lecturer in SMU, teaching postgrad and undergraduates. His focus is mainly in endo. Uh, he is the I in Omeri, he's one of the directors of Omeri. 
And I believe we are very privileged to be here, and I know we are going to get a wealth of knowledge from who. Let's let's welcome him. Thank you. Good morning, uh, everyone, and uh, thank you so much uh, for the, uh, the introduction, Dr. Tari. Um, and uh, yes, I never been so um, I never felt so shaky before <laughs> the presentation, mainly because of what happened um, yesterday. I rather not tell you; I'll tell you at the end. Um, and uh, I would like to thank the sponsors, um, Right Milners, and uh, also thank DPA for inviting me to come um, and be one of the presenters. Um, and I also would like to thank um, my organization, other than DPA. Uh, friends, brothers, and uh, my support structure, Omeri. And mostly, let me thank you because you are the ones that are uh, motivating us to go on uh, in terms of looking for information with regards to um, anodontics. As soon as there is a discussion in our uh, uh, social platform, I'm not sure if the light will do justice to. Uh, the slides. Okay, are you fine like this, or you need a little bit of light? The? Oh, okay. Thank you. All right. <laughs> that was like, oh, let me not mention political parties. But anyway, thank you for that. <laughs> we paid attention so quickly. But, but ladies and gentlemen, without any waste of time, I. I already um, recognize the fact that instead of starting at half past eight, we started rather um, 30 minutes later, uh, um, late. So I'll try by all means to touch on everything that I was supposed to um, dish out to you guys. And um, if you think that I'm going to give you an outline of my lecture, uh, forget it, because um, this is basically the outline of my lecture. We're going to speak about the seven eye-opening technologies taking anodontics to the next level. All I'm supposed to be speaking about here is um, what is it that it's a technological innovation that is um, you know, assisting a dentist, a clinician, an endodont uh, uh, endodontic uh, you know, practitioner to achieve predictability in um, uh, preparing endodont in, in undertaking endodontic treatment. Uh, um, one of the most important thing is that um, there are three C's that that specific individual should have, and that is competency, consistency, and confidence. So those are the three C's that I'm going to be speaking about, and I'm going to put most, uh, more, 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 more stress on them. And the other thing is that uh, you know, endodontics used to be practiced in a way that um, you just go clean, prepare the canal, obturate and then you pray and hope that in the next six months, the patient will still be okay. The patient will still have um, you know, the tooth in the mouth. It's because we from the dark, we just um, uh, couldn't um, you know, tell, predictably say that this is going to be successful. So in other words, I'm saying we have been uh, worse in terms of predictability than those that are extracting the teeth. Now here is a statement. If we extract a tooth, I want you to listen to this carefully. If we extract a tooth with irreversible pulpitis and the apical periodontitis, healing of the socket is guaranteed. The entire pulp, when you extract, is removed. The entire pulp and its contents are removed. The, um, the, the bacterial toxins are removed by extraction. Now, if you cannot remove this bacteria and toxins, bacteria toxins, as somebody that has been trained for five years or five and a half years, and you still say you're better than an ordinary man on the street who's just removing teeth. 
then you must rethink again. So in other words, we are saying, if we need to beat this predictability, there's something that we need to do and do exceptionally well. If you extract that tooth, what is the end result? Tooth loss. And is that where you're going to come in with your bridge implant and everything? The best implant that you can ever have is your natural tooth. So if you undertake endodontics, making sure that the patient retains the periodontal ligament, the patient re retains the tooth, uh, the natural tooth, but it doesn't end there. You need to know that there's going to be um, you know, a restorative part. So in all these steps that you're going to take, um, that is endodontics. Um, so the question is, is there a way of taking advantage to the knowledge that we already have? That if I remove a tooth, oh yes, I didn't know it works like that, but anyway. Um, we shall see as we proceed. Yes, if, is there a way of taking advantage of the knowledge that we already have now? That if a tooth is extracted, and it had symptoms, the symptoms will disappear. Yes, there is a way we do endodontics. And when we do endodontics, it means we are retaining the natural tooth. So in other words, it's one point for us as compared to those that are extracting, right? And like I've said, John West said, initially endodontic success was based on the feedback to ensure predictability of radicular endodontic preparation and operation. I said, we moved from the dark, now we go into light. Why am I saying this? Is that with the procedures, with the steps, techniques, and uh, the intervention or the, um, the, the methods that we use to do endodontics, we can predict and we can tell that this tooth is gonna uh, stay in the mouth for um, uh, a prolonged period. Now, just to confirm what I said already, nature promises that if a disease such as endodontic disease is eliminated, the word eliminated is in blue. The reason I did that is that you need to eliminate the disease process. You need to eliminate um, the, the bacterial toxins. You need to remove the entire part. So if it is eliminated, then symptoms of the disease uh, simultaneously sees again John West this year, 2021. So, okay. Um, now, um, uh, um, Rick, Richard, uh, I mean, Rikuchi at R. Okay, there we are. Rikuchi um, at R said that if you stop your procedures at the apical constriction, very important, apical constriction, take note of that, and succeed in the control of infection, in both necrotic and vital cases, in addition to normal radiological appearance of the periapical or the, yeah, the periapical tissue, regeneration of normal trabecular bone occurs histologically together with an uninflamed periodontal ligament. Now, we're talking apical construction. How do you best determine where the apical construction is? Can you see an apical construction in a normal radiograph? The answer is no. So what is it that we need to use so that this apical construction um, or this area or the anatomical area, we are able to make sure that we stop everything there? So it means there's something we need help in a way. Can we still um, use the, uh, you know, the radiographic working lens? Is that what we need to do now? I don't think so. How many of you are using apex locators? Can we just see? Okay, maybe I should say how many are not using apex locators? Okay, we'll talk about it, don't worry. Um, thanks, my brother, for your honesty, right? <laughs> so so um, we, you, you'll see the need to use it. Now, 
Ladies and gentlemen, when we're talking of an endodontic triad, this shouldn't be a, uh, you know, a jargon or anything. You must know that when you do endodontics, you're supposed to uh, disinfect the root canal system. You're supposed to prepare that root canal system. I said prepare here. Why am I saying prepare? If we say instrumentation, it sounds like you're going to use force um, in that particular tool. You're not using force. So you prepare, in other words, you shape. And shaping means carving. And carving means no force, but light, uh, you know, just a uh, light force. So that is why it's supposed to be preparation. And instead of instrumentation, you're supposed to say you shape. Okay? And after doing that, you should be able to seal of whether there's bacteria that is left within that root canal system, whether there is anything that you didn't clean properly, you should make sure that you seal. And the seal should be an apical and a coronal seal. So um, uh, I know I know some of you know Sutudwana, there are alephic chances again. All right, we don't give bacteria chance to reestablish themselves into the root canal system. So we must eliminate them uh, completely. Now, so already we've got, um, there's a need for us to be assisted in one way or another. Firstly, you should be able to diagnose. If you, can, if you can't diagnose, we go back. Somebody came with a toothache. He already know that I've got a toothache. He already diagnosed himself and you can't, tell what the problem is. Are you still calling yourself uh, um, uh, you know, a professional <laughs> dental clinician? No. So firstly, you need to diagnose. That is why um, I think this is John West again. He said, endodontics is much more than a file. I mentioned a file before we go to the next slide. The reason is that we know that how we prepare this root canal system it's by using um, um, uh, endodontic files. So it is actually more than a file, but a service. It means there is a psychological you know, uh, influence or there's a psycho psycho psychological effect uh, to this uh, patient that we are treating. And don't forget as well as you as a clinician, there is a psychological effect. So you should be considerate and you should be actually act, uh, uh, aware of the uh, negative or of anything that can go wrong while you are preparing um, uh, this root canal. So yes, we need proper diagnosis. We also need um, proper emergency care. We also need interdisciplinary approach to this particular tooth because if you're going to do root canal successfully, so you only work on the root, what about the crown? So there is prosto, uh, prostodontis that comes into effect. And also you need to be speaking amongst your peers in terms of, um, yeah, sorry, I need to keep this microphone right. <laughs> okay, yeah. So um, you need to speak with your peers. You need to uh, speak to somebody that does endodontics better than you, or that has more information better than you. So technology is the center. It's in the center of endodontics, right? Now, when you're done with your diagnosis, we, we, let me speak about that uh, radiograph uh, that you see over there. When you take a radiograph, you must be able to see about three millimeters uh, of the apical area. If you can't, that radiograph shouldn't be used. And if you take a radiograph and you want to diagnose, be able to follow the periodontal ligament space all the way. Just as um, an advice, do not, do not take a radiograph without showing the neighboring teeth as well, because you need to compare if indeed this is a normal uh, you know, uh, periodontal ligament space, you compare it with your neighboring teeth, and you can be able to see the, uh, the contrast uh, uh, very well. So we passed there. <laughs> we spoke, or I mentioned an apex locator before. The apical constriction or the apical end of endodontics, it's very 
uh, important. When a tooth was extracted, there was nothing that was shoved past the apical area. We removed the pulp and its contents and the body takes over because we're working on a human being with an intact immune system as well, right? So if when we perform endodontics, we can stick to that and say, we do what we can and let nature take over, that will have actually done justice to our profession. So the apex is actually very important. Now, I just thought I should mention this, that uh, uh, we all know biology, we all know anatomy. Um, dentin, or let me say the pulp, is always associated or is covered by dentin. So if we say we're removing the entire pulp and its contents, it means we remove that which is covered by dentin, right? So anything that is not covered by dentin, it's outside the parameters of the pulp. Are, are we still together? Because I'm talking alone. <laughs> okay, everything or everything that is not within the pulp or everything that is outside the team, it is no longer a pulp. So where is this apical constriction? There are studies that have shown that some of the teeth do not have apical constriction at all. Um, maybe I should ask uh, my brother, if I move around, does it influence your... All good, lovely. All right, uh, because I can't be standing in one place. <laughs> okay, the, this is the apex, is a histology, histological appearance of the apex of the tooth. You can see in red there, that's the apical constriction. Now, the A is dentin, and from dentin, we know that the periodontal ligament cannot be uh, 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 attached anywhere except within uh, the alveolus as well as um, within cement, I mean, on cement. So there's actually uh, a structure between the dentine and the alveolar bone, uh, which is uh, the periodontal ligament and cementum. Now, once you are in cementum, it means there is a periodontal ligament. So your apical constriction or where we're supposed to stop our uh, preparation, it's where dentine ends not where the cementum ends. When you take an X-ray, a periodical X-ray, a radiographic uh, image, a radiographic waking lens, you're actually missing the place where you're supposed to end your preparation. So we talked diagnosis. I spoke about the apex. You already need what? devices that are going to assist you to make sure that you are really spot on on where you're working, right? So an apex locator functions in this way. They are resistors and they are conductors. So it has two ends, which are, we can call them, uh, you know, uh, uh, probes or electrodes. Yeah, correct me if I'm wrong. Yeah. All right. So you hook the other end on the vestibulum. It has been found that um, the oral mucosa has the same resistance as the periodontal ligament. So in other words, you can, there can be a flow of current between the two. Hence, uh, your file, because it's a good conductor of, 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 um, of, of electricity, it can, there can be a flow, the current flow between the file and the periodontal ligament. Hence, the apex locator uses those two. There is resistance and conductors. So if your file is introduced into the root canal system and it goes down towards the apical constriction, or do not say the apical constriction only, where it is supposed to be the apical constriction, 
the address locator will clearly say dystopia. My brother, I'm going back to you again. We have seen a lot of um, um, uh, routes, two routes, where the the the, the apical foramen is way up in the root. So if you can go with your two millimeters short of the radiographic apex, yes, you will get it right somewhere. But is it predictable? Now knowing that the foramen doesn't open exactly at the radiographic opus. So it means radiographically, you even see this cementum. And with age, what happened? Cementum, <laughs> because there's adaptation of the tool. And even sometimes for those that are uh, practicing, the cementum grows. So you actually uh, elongating this. That is why sometimes we show you x-rays in social media and everywhere. You see, you know, the obturation is like way short of the uh, of, of the radiographic apex, and you're like, ah, no, this one, that chance. There's nothing like that. It's because the apex locator was used. What I'm saying is, do not do endodontics without an apex locator. Then you are doing guesswork. Then you are worse than somebody that extract tooth because it's not guessing. They will tell you if I have a toothache, I remove it and everything is gone. Now you go and fiddle with this tooth. Uh, two months down the line, the same patient comes back. You're not doing justice to the uh, profession. I spoke of the three C's uh, in my introduction. The three C's, which is consistency, confidence, and competent competence. Competency is what you have when you are at undergraduate they say no there's a level of competency here this person can do at least one two three now those three c's are influenced by knowledge skill and desire the desire part why did i put it there is that uh, guys there are people who have interest in endodontics there are people who have passion in endodontics and there are people who are dentists from clinicians if you have an interest in endodontics, you tend to do what interests you. You tend to do what pleases you. Not what pleases the patient, uh, the clinician, as well as doing justice to the profession. If you've got desire, it means there's an edge. There is, you, need to, you need to gain more. You need to gain knowledge into the subject. So there is actually a motivation to know better. So if you've got passion, you will do it no matter what. I've done endodontics on um, wisdom teeth. You've done a lot, uh, Doctor T, and uh, Doctor. Um, I think uh, even some of some of you here, if you see the tooth is functional, you have gone. Uh, you have actually uh, overdone yourself. You you do even on the. Uh, I've done one so far on an impacted eight. The patient didn't, didn't want to remove, so that's passion. You do. You you go an extra mile. Right, um, I see there's an empty slide here, but anyway. <laughs> How do you measure competency? Um, are we still on time? I think we are. Right, measuring competency, according to the American uh, Association of Endodontics, I think these guys, this is a well thought uh, you know, booklet. You can Google it, you'll find it. They say that um, a clinician should have an ability to predictably enlarge a canal space to mechanically remove vital or necrotic tissues and microorganisms, provide effective space. I said, um, it's not about the file. So the function of the file is not to do endodontics. The function of the file is to provide effective space for disinfection and doing our obturation. That is the only function the file is doing, all right? Yes, it does remove this uh, uh, pulp, but it doesn't hit, remove all of the uh, the dimensional the, 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 or the, the, the pulp contents. Now, again, as a clinician, a conscious determination and maintenance of the exact apical endpoint so it means if you do something wrong, they're going to take this paper, put it in front of you and say, did you have a conscious determination and maintenance 
of the exact apical endpoint. How did you do that? Did you use an apex locator? Which apex locator did you use? And then you put it there and say, this is the apex locator I've used. Is it a manufacturer's fault that you went through the apex? Or is it your fault that you went through the apex? If you use an apex locator, it said stop here, you didn't stop. You know? So you should know exactly where to stop. So it means if you are competent, you should know exactly. If you use a radiographic uh, working lab, well, you are competent according to probably laws of 1970 something, 1960 something. Right. You should be able to select um, instruments and you should know the tre treatment sequence, how to use those particular instruments. Now you should have in-depth understanding of the development of procedural errors. If there is a problem, if you separate the file, if you, uh, you we call it an offering, that is our lingo. So if there's such, you should be consciously, uh, you should be conscious about that. And of course, I said there's a psychological influence in endodontics. You should consider the patient. If you separate the file, you speak to the patient. Ah, I've messed up. There's a, a pin. That's what, that's what we tell the patient. There's a pin that broke in you. Um, the patient should know the, the, the consequences of leaving it there or trying to remove it. If you can't, you should be able to refer to somebody that knows better. So we talk about technicalities. We talk about how you can use the file, you know, the packing motion and all that. But the means that are used to prepare canals are secondary to the correct adherence to principles. So it means there are principles in endodontics. And those principles are we use files and chemicals um, you know, to clean the root canal system. So it means there are principles that are governing the use, the chemical uh, cleaning, I mean the mechanical cleaning. Those are those, uh, those are the uh, the objectives of preparing the root canal system. Just to mention one, and then we go ahead. Uh, remember I said we are a little bit um, behind. If you prepare a tapering funnel with narrowing, uh, with narrowing uh, cross-sectional diameters, in the essence, to mimic the shape of a tornado, obviously it's an American, right? <laughs> if you speak tornado, I don't know. <laughs> okay. Uh, Number two, prepare a taper that is proportional to the external dimensions of the root, of the root that does not predispose to the root, sub, uh, to subsequent vertical root factor. Okay, anyway, you follow, just, just grab this, follow the uh, natural, um, you know, occurrence of that particular root canal system. You don't change its shape, you rather just expand it a little. Even when you expand, there are limits to it. So just to, these are the five mechanical objectives. I know there's one, I saw it, well, this was written in what, 2019, there's one that I, uh, I saw, but what is important is that we should always make sure that the apical limit is mastered. Now, we're speaking mechanical. Now, what about the biological? We're working on a patient who has got an immune system. So there should be biological, objectives of undertaking a root canal treatment. And uh, one of the requirements is that we should confine instrumentation. I don't like that word. I don't like it, but because now some of you will say, yeah, you didn't uh, write uh, any reference or anything. Yes, I've referred this guy, but instrumentation for me, I don't think it's like it. um, preparation, yes. Confine instrumentation to the root canal. That is what number, this is number four. Number four, I don't like it. I know you don't understand it, but I put it on for the mere fact that there, there has been a movement from then until now. There has been innovation, there's been more evidence that we can actually do root canal in one visit. So this one says complete cleaning and shaping of single canals. canals. It's out. Completely out. We, 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 we do a lot of uh, one day visit with molars. Now, <laughs> here is the bigger one. <laughs> Before I go there, you cannot do what you can't see. You need at least light. You need 
um, uh, magnification. Here is the basis for that. A human eye can only see up to 0.2 millimeters. Um, I mean, um, objects that are 0.2 millimeters. You can only see those two objects as separate entities. As soon as it gets smaller, you see it as one. Well. Some of you are not getting MB2s. And you think it's because ah, no, it's not there, but it's because you can't see. So you need magnification. You need an uh, assistant. Hence, I put all this kind of microscope that you see here. Um, before a microscope, just on a lighter note, yes, uh, you need uh, loops at least. Um, Spectre tells about loops. Spectre tells about loops. Uh, I've got mine here. I, today, I just thought I should put them aside. I'm able to see if it's green, at least I'm close. So these are the different kinds of um, um, uh, microscopes that are available. But for me, it has nothing to do with the name. And I want to thank um, um, uh, uh, Zumat for lending us their microscope. They actually brought the best that they have. So in other words, they started somewhere. And as you can see, where is it? Uh, the first one, yeah, there it is. There's been much more improvements till they go to that one. I'm not sure whether any of these ones have got improvement that is now in competition with them, I don't know. All I know is that I need these key factors in a microscope. Remember I said um, uh, 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 loops. Yes, if you can get loops, you are fine. You can go ahead and do root canal, but there are challenges that you're going to find along the way. So you will refer to those that have microscopes uh, to see your problem. Now, the key factors of microscope is the optical quality, illumination, which is um, light, uh, workflow integration. You should be able to, um, you know, to, re to, to record all uh, your findings. Um, ergonomic design, maintenance and hygiene. For example, uh, this particular microscope, I think uh, between the patient or the object and the lens, it can go from 250 to 400. You know, you're using the same microscope. It's 250 to 400. So it means Dr. Tadi here can put the patient's head about between 250 and 400, and the splash of the preparation of the root uh, of the tooth is not getting into that microscope. So there should be uh, hygiene and maintenance. And of course, another thing that you need is that um, if there's no technical support, why buy it? There should be a technical support. Now, <clears throat> it should support documentation. Now, <laughs> about light, about illumination, You've got those, uh, it's, 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 it's four types, halogen, metal halide, xenon, and lead. Let me say and openly say it now. If you don't have those, the last one, xenon or lead, forget it. You won't see, <laughs> you won't see problem because you need something that is going to help you see what you do as if it's daylight. So those are the lights that are going to give you that advantage. That when we're speaking of a degree of magnification, some of these uh, microscopes, okay, they use lenses inside. Some of them, you change manually. You can even hear the lens changing to go to the next, as if you are at an optometrist's room. You know? And uh, some of them, it's zooming into the object. That is why we've got ZoomX, which is zooming into the object. But it doesn't mean you can't see if you use those that are changing. It's just that now you like somebody that is driving a manual car and somebody that is driving an, an automatic. So you get, um, sometimes you get tired in doing that. Or else you can go for it because that's what you can afford. No problem, right? Okay, <clears throat> ergonomics. I showed you different types of microscopes. Some of them, you cannot turn the eyepiece it, it's one it's one unit with the lenses and you can't even move them properly you have to unscrew certain um, you know points so that it can rotate 
but there are those that are moving without uh, any effort. You need that. And the other thing is that when you look into the eyepiece, you're not supposed to uh, move in, uh, to remove your eyes from the eyepiece. So your dental uh, assistant should be up to a certain level of, 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 of competency as well. Right. The inherent challenges in endodontics. These we can avoid, they are there. The first challenge is on diagnosis, okay. When we say diagnosis is a problem. So in other words, I'm saying that having a, a radiogram in your practice is not having a gadget. Having an X-ray is like having a dental chair. If you're still working without an X-ray in your practice, it means you have somebody that practices on a normal chair like this. Why, why don't you just throw away that chair? Because it helps you. <laughs> yeah, you have to, you have to Anyway, <laughs> technology is designed to help in clinical success, hence predictability. Number one, radiographs and CBCT, for example. Let me speak uh, uh, just about CBCT. Well, five, five seconds, don't start counting. Um, the curve that you see on a radiograph, it's either mesial or distal. There's still a curvature that goes buccally and lumen that you don't see. So an important, an important curve distally is the same, it has the same uh, influence as the curve that goes medial. So if you don't have a CBCT, what do you do? Cone shifting or buccal object rule, you know about it, right? We can't touch everything at this session. We don't have time, right? But I don't want to say this. All I'm here for is to tell you that there are technologies that are helping us to be able to do exceptionally well, to be able to compete with those specialists that are well, 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 well worked. So we also need magnification and illumination. We need uh, the information about file metallurgy. Um, I'll, I'll talk about this. We've got a file that we, we, we're going to use there. Now, the cleaning and disinfection. Ladies and gentlemen, sodium hypochlorite. Since when? Years back, World War or something. <laughs> World War II. Yeah? yeah, they've been using that to clean wounds. We're still using it inside root canal uh, system, right? But there are technologies that are helping us to make sure that the, we clean extra. Uh, we, we go a step further because the toxins of bacteria in the dentine, they go deeper into the um, dentinal tubules. Some of these things you, can, you cannot remove. So in cleaning and disinfection, that's why there's also lasers that are coming into play, right? And another thing, I'm speaking expensive things, right? And <laughs> no medical aid pays for that. Let's, 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 let's go a little bit, um, you know, easy on ourselves. Eh? So it means you can buy um, um, a scaler with a plastic tip in there. Scaler, I mean, the, uh, uh, what do they call that uh, scaler? That, um, that uses and no, Sonic S, yes. Uh, then you buy that, you put a plastic tip there, you activate the sodium hypochlorite inside, you buy yourself baby bottle warmer, you know it. And then you heat your sodium hypochlorite up to 60, between 60 and 70, you will still get this, uh, uh, you know, closer effect. It's pre predictable. If you're going to use Milton, if you're going to use 1% uh, sodium hypochlorite, compared to somebody that is using 6%, think about it, right? Think about it. We cannot talk about it in just uh, now. If there is, um, you know, um, a Congress somewhere, where anodontic lecture is going to be given from morning up till sunset, I'll put my mind on that because I know there's so much that we can talk about, right? Yes. <laughs> okay, yeah. Obturation and use of sealers. You have seen we moved from oh, uh, my heart beats because my school, SMU, is still using raw cement. We have a difficult task with Dr. Muloi, as we speak, of trying to get rid of that. And now just to, just to give you what is happening, 
the overhead lights, they are yellow. I can tell you now, if they can say go and do a practical exam in the clinical area, the SMU, I will fail. I will fail. So let's not talk much about that. There will be an improvement. We put more, more pressure on that. So there will be something that is happening. Now, restoration. Remember, you're not only working on the root. Yes, you can do a nice root canal, uh, root canal obturation, but you cannot restore that tooth. And you can also go back and say, I rely on um, post. The post is not strengthening your tooth. The post will lead to removal of more tooth structure. So we don't need that. Or if we do, it should be to support the core, right? Not to give strength to the tooth. Right. What does it mean? It means that innovation has its own influence and has its own way of attacking us. It can either be incremental or disruptive. Ladies and gentlemen, that is, um, that is a truth um, that I took. I took uh, it's an extracted truth that had an amalgam. Look at that, um, you know, those, those pores in there. Uh, those little holes. And now the secondary caries, as you can see. Um, don't worry about the gender of the tooth. It's okay. I just find it like that. Um, okay. There's incremental, it's slow. I mean, some of us are still using amalgam. It will take years and years to convince somebody to stop using amalgam, but because I don't use a rubber dam anyway. But some of them are catching up. Now, disruptive, something like water lace, really. It has taken dentistry by storm because you can, with this water lace, you can cut soft tissue, you can cut hard tissue. And it seems like that is now dentistry, nothing else. That is disruptive. If you don't keep yourself up to date with these things, you will find yourself lost in, 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 in the. Um, you know, in, in, in your uh, professional life. I'm moving a little bit faster, ladies and gentlemen. Now, these three are the existing endodontic paradigm. We were in an era where we were talking much about endodontics 101. We were talking about conventional instrumentation. And this is our straight line access, ladies and gentlemen. This is where we said, when you want to do proper endo, make a big funnel so that you can clean that. We don't know about the long-term survival of that tooth. Evidence has it all, even yourself here. You've got the proof that a tooth that has been endodontically treated, and they say, extract. You like, you like, uh, and that, this one is a surgical extraction. Oh, really? It's a dentist who did that. So if we over prepare our teeth or our roots, there will be consequences. Then we moved to endodontic 2.0, which is minimally invasive endodontics or restorative driven endodontics. That is where we said, no, 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 no. We don't have to remove a lot of tooth structure. We have to preserve this dentin because dentin is actually the most or uh, the best composite we have in dentistry. So you preserve it. Then came this non-instrumentation endodontics. My only problem with this, I still need to find out whether I will be able to have an apical control if I obturate. However, they use it, especially in cases like dense in delta, tal tal three. Um, that is uh, tooth in tooth. If there is a, 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 a irreversible, pulp, irreversible pulpitis, there, they use some of this where they don't even put um, gutta percha in there. They clean using something like gentle wave, where it just flow chemicals into it. Actually, circulate chemicals into that area. When they finish, even the obturation, they use our sealer. They make sure that it circulates there and then they are done. So, but at this moment, ladies and gentlemen, the non-instrumentation endodontics doesn't say you don't put a file in there. There is a file, especially when you're supposed to know where the uh, apex is and all that. So we still go in there. 
there is a need for you to change from the way you're doing things in your practice or in your um, uh, in your, in your dentistry life. And if there is change, it means yes, there will be challenges. Do not limit your challenges, but challenge your limits. That's what I can say. Of course, there are opportunities, right? So if opportunities come, you have a chance of using the existing technology to be closer to what a specialist is now. And you have a chance of using technology to communicate with your uh, colleagues to be able to manage what you normally wouldn't manage without these existing technologies. Those that I mentioned are the seven eye-opening technologies that we have in undergraduates. Um, and ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> this statement, do not be happy with what you're doing. That's all I wanted to say. So the standards of practice are constantly changing based on new evidence and technology. So what we are practicing now, it's evidence-based and technology is the heart of what we are doing. You say, but I'm still crawling, right? I'm in a startup. What do you need to do? And this is simple. Know the basic ergonomic principles I spoke about, mechanical principles, I spoke about uh, biological principles. Know when to refer. I remember uh, Professor Nahama as well. Um, he, he was a periodontist in SMU. Um, he used to say that better dentist who knows when he doesn't know than the one who doesn't know that he doesn't know. So know when to refer, right? An X-ray machine is not a gadget, but a necessity if you don't have, please. And if you have, you know, the, the developer and all that, guys, endo, it's, it, 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 it absorbs your mind. If you're going to be looking on, some of us don't even have an X-ray view, right? You know, you go to the window, you can't see clearly. Say, Am I at the apex? Oh yeah, measured with the ruler. No substitute for an apex locator. I repeat again. Know the file system you are using and spend time on cleaning and disinfection. Stop this mentality of file this, file that. A file that I'm using, I spent less than five minutes of, yeah, less, at most, less than five minutes using that file system. Because the function of the file is to create space. Spend more time on cleaning and disinfection. Right. This is the last one. No matter what you do and how you do it, keep the end in mind, and that is the goal. If you play in the pool, there's somebody here who's the master of this game. That is the last ball that you have to sink. Um, don't, worry, don't, don't worry about the white color. It's black. We are done with this uh, formal lecture. The other one is not formal because I'm, I will be telling you about the file and how we're going to use it, um, you know, with what lies in front of us. But ladies and gentlemen, what I've talked about, it's what you need to do, what you need to think about. This is not about training you to do endodontics. It's about conscientizing each other about what really we need to do in our practices. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Dr. Spooley. Thank you very much. I Endo Eadura. It's very expensive. Yeah. This guy is mentioning a lot of things here, yeah, and you need to spend. But he didn't say anything. How are we going to get the money back? How much can we charge? Hmm. Doctor Sui, next time maybe you need to include that part. That look, I'm using an apex locator, microscope. Now the X-ray, I don't need to go to the window anymore. So all those things, someone must pay for them. But thank you very much for this informative lecture. Uh, I know I was next to my old maid here. She was saying that she's having an apex locator there. 
but she never used it. She doesn't know how to use it. You are having excellent diagnostic tool and you are busy guessing while you can be doing the data work. So from, from, from Monday, no, from Monday, get these numbers from now. Okay. <laughs> From Monday, you can call him or you can you can post it, put him in, or guide you. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Zibui. Um, we are going straight to our hands-on again. We're going straight to our hands-on. Uh, I think uh, the guys from Melnas they will assist with the uh, setup and all those things. Then from there, we'll go to table to table and try to assist where we can. Uh, thank you for your attention. Let's get ready to get our hands. Uh, in this files. Okay, just a five minutes uh, or less talk. Um, because um, we, we can't be using what we have there. I said, first of all, you have to know what you are using. So you're going to be using a file that is called MG32. Um, you don't even know how it works, right? Yeah. Most importantly, in a file, we need a toe and we need uh, speed, right? A torque is the force or the pressure or the turning force that the file or the motor gives to the file. And speed, it, 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 you know, we, 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 we do it in RPM, that's per unit. Um, just, just to carry on here, uh, when the mishaps that are happening, some of the files you've got um, when you have used it, look at what is happening there. I can't mention the name of the file now, but look at it. If you continue using it, you are in trouble, right? Some of them have got manufacturer's defect, right? Look at this. I found it accidentally, right? There it is. This is an uh, orifice opening, okay? Let me just mention, um, it's high flex orifice opening, this. I find it like this. IFLEX is my favorite file. But this is because I have a lot of them in my practice. So I was able to pick up that. There was one with, uh, you know, some unusual spirals uh, there. Some of these things, you introduce them in the endocanal, in the they practice. So they are inherent problems, or they are sometimes manufacturers' uh, problems. Separating the file, overuse, and Manufacturer's problems as well as instrument taper. If you don't know it, we can't mention everything. Oh, sorry, 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 sorry. Okay, this is just an additional, but uh, we're moving quickly. Uh, this is Antonis Chanotis' uh, 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 slide. I like it so much, and I always refer back to him. All it says, sorry. All this slide is saying is that there is no straight canal, no human being with a straight canal. So they have a, a little bit of a curvature. 75%, less than 27 degrees curve, 15%, 27 to 35, and the others, we call them dilaceration. If you want to work on that 10%, you must have a file that is very flexible, very flexible. So um, this is what I look in the file. I, I, I'm sure Dr. Dano will be here at uh, number four, right? No, yeah, you like that one, gem side party. Anyway, okay, control memory, that's what I'm looking for as well. And time, it's what, if I have a file that I'm going to just introduce into the panel for two seconds or oh, two seconds, uh, four minutes at least, then I'm happy. Okay, so this file that, okay, um, this is just an information. Of course, I didn't show you any clinical pictures of, I said I'm taking five minutes of the time, right? This is the five minutes I think I'm left with. Three and a half. Okay, smaller diameter preparations related to, are related to less cutting of the canal walls. That's what we need, preserved and thin. That is a truth, I did it this, this, this week. Using the file that you have in front of you um, to confuse you. Yeah. Who can tell which file is which? 
They are the fans. And I have them, these fans, I have them in my practice. Because some of them, some companies are giving me to test them. I have them. I took pictures of them. Why I'm putting this up here? Anyone that is going to say this company has copied from this company, I tend to have so many questions after seeing what I'm seeing here. Uh, do you want me to give an example? Uh, okay. Do you see this file here? This is a C plus file. Okay. This file here, it's a K label. This file up there, it's what we are using mostly. It's a K file. Can you see there are a lot of fruits here? And compared to that, that's how we differentiate between the two. This one, you can see that it's more squarish in cross section, actually, because you can see how uh, thick it is. Now, some file system, they, it's a mixture of this and that. Example is that file. That's from FKG. Look at that. The fruit far from each other. This one close. They just put a mixture. What is the advantage or how do you use these two? This one, watch winding. This one, it cuts as you brush against the wall. So they've got an advantage. They've got two in one. Maybe it's like a fresh four in one. <laughs> okay, this over here. Don't kill me. It's true not to me. That. Please don't. We are kill me. I know. But yeah, this one over here. Can you see the similarities? So how can you use it if you have it in front of you? You use it like that. So that's why you have to go up and down as you as you work. All right. There is this one, which is a T flex. I think right now as you got it, you gave me the file to test it. Yes, it's working. It is made out of, it's blue. Can you see? There is protaper ultimate coming, right? It's made out of blue wire. There is a blue wire already in existence. I'm not saying who copied from where. I don't have shares there. Please. This is what I have seen. This file over here. Oh, my battery is finished. No, no. Can you see that? That is my favorite file, the Hyflex EDM. Um, so you can see what I saw there. I've got a report on that. So today, and in front of you, you've got this file over here. It is not the same as any of these files. It is a file of on its own. It has got a, it's made out of nitrite. You can see the, the, the fluids are far from each other, far apart from each other. We need to take out the contents of the pulp. We need to exude it. It shouldn't be pushed to the outlet. That is why you've got so much space. This file over here is an MG3, not an MG32. So there's been an improvement. I didn't want to confuse you, but I just wanted to show you that if you don't know the file that you have in front of you, you will use it wrong. That is the MG3. MG3 had two dry pack files. That yellow and yellow is 20, right? So it was 2002 and 1502. Uh, am I right, um, Yolanda? 2002, 1502. Now realizing that this is a waste of time, they made a 1503. Uh, so that is why we move to MG32. That is what you have in front of you. You only have one black part file. So there it is, which is a 1503. Um, are we right? Yes, confirmed. 1503. Uh, those other ones were 1602, not uh, 1502. I think this more or less like, um, um, uh, you know, it, it's like it's a copy of, uh, I forgot the name, but in, in that's but yes, almost the same. So this is how you find MG3 package. And um, as you can see, there is, um, uh, 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 an orifice opener. The reason you're using an orifice opener is to clear off the dentinal triangles. But, ladies and gentlemen, you've got uh, a block there. That block, you already have an open orifice. 
and you already have the round camera. That is why the training or the hands-on that you supposed to be uh, attending is the hands-on where we using natural or extracted teeth because then you have the real feel of how it is to be in that canal. There is no uh, round canal. All canals or mostly are ovoid and you're not going to touch all the surfaces. But in this block, you're going to touch all surfaces anyway, just for you to have a feel of how the file uh, works. I said we need torque and speed always according to manufacturer's instruction. Don't take uh, wave one volt and use it in rotation. You will fracture it. Don't take um, um, uh, this is rotation, right? If you go into reciprocate it, what do you get? You get the results of reciprocating on a non-reciprocating file. It's like you connecting an electric kettle, putting an electric, uh, uh, you know, an electric iron, not kettle, an electric iron like the old ones. You know where we used to put it on the, <laughs> the stove somewhere. <laughs> so the advantages of this file are as follows, or the parameters, or rather these strokes and all that. So in front of you, you've got a motor, right? If you have got motors. For the S, uh, let me let me just mention them by name. The orifice opener. You're supposed to use three newton centimeters and uh, a speed of 300. Actually, the speed is 300 to 500. So you don't worry. Just set the speed to three, from 300 to 350. Then you're fine. Um, all of them. They are using the same speed. All you need to change is these three newton centimeters. Now, I don't know if we should use it now because we already have an open uh, orifice there. So we can skip this one. So it means set your motors to two Newton centimeters uh, all of, all of, and, and 300 to 350. If they are not at that speed, uh, I hope somebody is going to help you as they move around. Uh, how much time do we have? Yeah, it's fine. Less than an hour, we can do it. It's fine. We can do it too. Okay. One case MG3, not MG32. This is the one before this. That is the case that I used. Um, okay. We're done. This is another case. Uh, long standing to. One, one thing that I um, um all right. Thank you, Dr. Sabuyu. Hello, everyone. Um yes, so unfortunately we don't have enough motors for everyone. We really apologize about that. So we'll just make turns and we'll share. And just remember, we're working on a plastic block that's not mounted. So if you don't like the feel of the file, it's the plastic. It's not enamel and linteen. I think you'll be super, super surprised with this file that Dr. Shibuya um, phenomenally spoke about now. And the best thing about this file, the entire system is only 380 Rand. So if you order today or in the next week, you're going to go into a drawer We've got virtual glasses, we've got hand pieces and everything. So if you order MG3 or anything from the right moment stand, you're gonna go into that drawer to win hand pieces, bleaching hampers, virtual glasses, everything. So the entire system is only 380 Rand. Okay, thank you. Uh, thank, thank you so much. Uh, Okay, um, I just want to hear what uh, the class want to do. I'm, I've already suggested that we don't use the, SF, uh, the, the orifice opener, not the SF, but the orifice opener, uh, just due to time. First, firstly, you know that you cannot go into the canal. You cannot go into any canal uh, without a size 10 file having gone through that.
if you have a glide path, the files that we are using must follow the natural existence of the of that glide. So we're using a size 10. From a size 10, we can go to a 1504, the white file, right? Remember the settings on your model. Okay. And like offset. Oh, yes. <laughs> I think they must first leave everything because they're not listening now. Right. And then they're going to do it wrong. Beyond. Okay. Oh, if anyone can just try to take off, so we leave that. If anyone can just quickly see, he's gonna now sign it. Right. He will come around and go out here. We're gonna use the water for irrigation, so we'll just pull up the water for you guys. Right. Yeah. So. Yeah. It's much. Alright. Alright. Okay. 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 Okay
you have expanded the canal. So it is no longer the same size as the size 10 file. It means you can introduce a bigger file than a size 10. So that will actually, uh, you know, avoid separating this file. I think you can, you can go on uh, doing this. Uh, I'm just giving you, what? Three minutes, is it fine? Just so you know something, uh, somebody will talk about the, the way you file or the way you, you prepare this, uh, a curve like this. You don't have to pull it towards the curvature. When the file is taken out of this canal, it must be you file away from the curvature. If you file into the um, uh, curvature, you actually stripping the inside of the, uh, of the curvature, and then you will have uh, uh, transportation doing that. So you don't have to do that, especially with the lower uh, molars. <coughs> Excuse me. With the lower molars, because uh, the, the, the vacation area is too, thank you. Okay, you can do that. And after doing that, we will move on to the 1503. Okay, um, are, we, are we there? Or is there anybody with a problem? Uh, Dr. T, can you assist with those that have a little bit of a problem, please? <clears throat> Okay, um, gentlemen, um, yeah, it's just a matter of having a feel, you know, I think that is something that you should uh, practice uh, when, when, when you go out of here. Let's go to the white file. That is a 1503. As long as the size 10 is loose there, go to a size 15. Here is an advice. I did it deliberately by saying that you should introduce the file, even the hand file, introduce it into the canal up to the curvature or loosely without putting pressure. And once you start uh, getting resistance, it means that file need a little bit of a boost. And what gives that file a boost is actually your motor. So my advice is do not run your motor before the file uh, get resistance. Some files, you don't even need that motor. You will find that the canal is it's, it's way big. You didn't even need to run the motor. Okay, you can do, you can use your hands. So watch this here. I'm introducing this file here. 
which is a 15. Can you see it negotiates the curve a little bit better? And that is where you need the motor. I don't have a motor here. That's why I'm okay. Is it set? Three hundred and two point six. Ah, two. It was supposed to be two, right? No. Yeah. Yeah, supposed to be two. <clears throat> okay. All right. Um, doctor, who is the doctor who said the motor is damaged? Oh yes. There's one thing about putting the file into the motor. You only press, you only press there when you're removing. When you're putting the file, you just have to lock. It's locked. You don't touch there. Okay. So that it will mean from each file you will have pressed it so many times. But if I just lock it in like that. I will only touch when I'm removing the, the, the file. Okay. So <clears throat> remember, I said you just introduce it up to I think I'm done. But remember one thing I didn't do is to take the working length from the previous file and transfer it to the file that I'm working with. So that is very important. And once, once you take out a file outside the canal, you have to examine the file that you have been using and you will see that it's dirty. You will have, with me, I've got alcohol swabs next to me. I always wipe the file. Uh, I won't take this file back into the canal without uh, wiping with an alcohol. Now, the other thing is I also introduce sodium hypochlorite into that canal. Already, I've got a canal which is bigger than the, uh, the size 15. Here we, here we are again. Okay. No, it's fine. I'm putting back this file without activating the, um, uh, the, 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 the motor. There it is. Uh, let me just transfer this to 16. Uh, where's the ruler? I don't have it. It's fine. It's fine. Now I'll go to 16. 16 for this is where there's, <laughs> it's almost 16 there. It's, I think, yeah, it's 16. So I will just go in there without activating this motto. Can you see that I'm at waking length? There. So the canal is bigger than a 1503. Once you are at 1503, you can go to, uh, once you're done with that, you can go to a 2004. Here is uh, a tip again. Any curvy canal, or any dilacerated root, you must finish at 2004. You can go a little bit at 2005, but this is the file which has got a 2004 uh, taper that you can easily do um, uh, dilacerated canals. <coughs> the same way, transfer your working length to the next file which uh, our block is 16, so I'll simply put it at the end of the fluids. Once again, um, sorry. Once again, similar way, I go into the canal without activating my motor. Then I activate it. Look at how this file negotiates that band there. Nice, right? And then I'm going deeper. I'm at length. 
So same way again, when you are at length and you look at your file, look at that debris. So in clinical situation is I wash or I clean that with um, alcohol swab. And don't forget as well, you irrigate to remove the debris that is there. If you've got, um, you know, So the irrigation needle should be able to get into the canal to at least two millimeters uh, within the working length. So this particular needle is not going past that area. And some you need to activate this so that you can be able to go past there. I used SIS 20. If I need to use a bigger file again from here, I can go to a size 2504. Again, transfer your working length. Okay. Uh, for those who are watching, uh, it's, uh, here it is. I do the same procedure. No force, nothing. I used a 20 -0, a the canal. Here we go. I'm done. From here, you don't have a problem. Look, we're working on the block. If it was a uh, natural tooth, I'll tell you, we're going to put, um, you know, a, a, a sealer and then we cut it off here. Bioceramic sealer, you're done. Uh, guys, All right. <laughs> I, I, I love people who are not using the files. <laughs> they are taking them home, I know. One <laughs> From it, right? So you check now. Once you work left here, yeah. mm. so which ones you start with now? White, yellow, okay. and red, red. You follow each other. Right. Uh, this, this, this one, you know what? Yeah. It is the file that you use to open. You okay. already okay. have this is open. So yes. you don't need okay. this one. Yeah. So it's okay. No. Mm. Okay. Um, the, the, the packages that you have there, uh, they give directives. So just put the package as it is. If you are using that in a patient, you will start with the file that is on your extreme left, left. Yeah. You start with the one that is on your extreme left. Open up. Let's say, After working length, after your working length with the hand file, 
you can go to the orifice opening just to make sure that there is no disturbance of the walls of the uh, walls of the cavity so you don't have dentinal triangles there then from there you can uh, go and expand your glide path with the same file you use to determine your waking length expand after that you go to 1503 remember the key is do not turn the motor do not activate the motor before you get resistance why did you not start rotating your hand file when we first went into that canal so you should use the same method the same approach Is there anyone with a problem or anyone who need assistance? Okay, uh, just lastly from me. Lastly from me, and then you can play around with these files, right? <clears throat> the key is, <clears throat> oh, my voice. do not go and throw away your motors, right? The key is know the torque settings and the speed. So you can use any motor, but set the speed. And always remember, this is a rotate, rotating file, not a reciprocating file. If you're going to set it at reciprocation, it will separate. That was the last thing uh, from me. I think we we right on time. Where is that? Dr. Kelly? That thing, no? it's just 300 rupees. Yes, 300 rupees is just for what I have left. I have left. But you can buy three times this set, uh, and then you buy one. That's how it's economic. It's economic, this one. So it is a gem start. I'm not sure. I see it. Yeah. Oh, you think? Oh, okay. Anyone in the center? I wanted to find out if you can stop that yellow yeah. color. Remember, this is a 2004. Yes. Yeah? Even if you use uh, the winner tool, you can use this. Oh. But there's something that I said. Uh, Okay, I think I think we done so this one we can close the TV. Oh yeah, that no, yeah, we done. We'll come to the next session. Okay. Um, guys, uh, we're waiting for announcements from Dr. Tadina. Hello.
Uh, guys, when you are done, I think it's time for tea break. And then the second session is going to start from 11 o'clock. You will choose whether, uh, I think you have you should have selected, I guess. Hello, 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 hello. The numbers are free, teach them. You met Dr. Seho, welcome. Baton Dr. Seho is here. If you can just give me attention. Uh, now it's time for tea break. At 11 o'clock, another, another session will be starting. So if you are coming back to Endo, you can come back here. If you are going to Otho, it's upstairs, or in this line, it's upstairs. And then uh, next door, I think it's guided by Ophelen, the site. So digital workflow, yeah, it's digital workflow next door. Yeah, thank you very much. I don't want the... Uh,